Okay, so we have about 20 people online. Basically, my fellows, like, they were just finishing up. Oh, okay. Well, we'll wait another minute or so then. Okay, when they're here, we'll start. We're just waiting for a few more people to come. So we have a decent sized audience. Wow, okay. Hey. Okay, and we now have 23 people online. Are we ready to begin? Great. Well, um, I want to welcome everyone to our um, Thursday DMICE research conference. Um, we have about uh, about eight or nine people in here and um, 23 or so online, so a nice uh, uh, turnout. And we have a, an international visitor today um, who I had the opportunity to talk with a little uh, earlier and who um, is a... Um, uh, brought here by his uh, former mentor, Adib, who most of you know as one of our faculty. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, so I, um, as I always do when people come to visit, I say, you gotta give a talk. And so he's gonna give a talk. So it, g it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Abu Syed Mohammed Latiful Haq, um, who is a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering in, at the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Um, and um, he um, uh, has, sounds like he's had many students in his career, including Adib. Um, and um, <clears throat> he is, um, he's gonna talk to us today um, about um, an, uh, an effort in Bangladesh to um, uh, build a national health um, data warehouse. I'll, I'll let him explain the details. He told me a little bit about it when we met. Um, just um, by history, he uh, obtained a PhD in from the Department of Computer and Information Science at the University of Strathclyde, in, which is in Glasgow in the UK in 2003. And his research areas include health informatics, data warehouse and mining, data warehousing and mining, big data management and analysis and e-learning. Um, he served as chair of the ACM Association for Computing Machinery uh, in, at the Bangladesh University of Engineering Technology in 2015 and 2016. He's a fellow of the Bangladesh Computer Society and a fellow of the Institution of Engineers in Bangladesh. He currently leads the uh, Systems Research and Development Laboratory, um, which has developed to focus applied research in the area of health data analytics and e-learning, a topic of great interest to us here in DMICE. And so um, he's, he's had a number of collaborations in industry and with other um, uh, universities, including the uh, University of Marquette in Wisconsin and um, other places. So I, uh, I, will, uh, I won't take up all this time. I'll let him... Um, uh, give his talk here as, as we've been doing since we've kind of come back from the pandemic is um, uh, he will, uh, he's presenting here. Those who are out on WebEx are, are seeing the slides and uh, uh, maybe a little bit of video. Once he's done talking, we'll hopefully have some time for uh, question and answer. And um, this uh, owl unit, these owl units that we've been using seem to be working pretty well for that purpose. And, and we'll also, um, uh, make sure we capture questions that come in over WebEx. So um, go ahead, Dr. Hot. 
Thanks a lot to Demais and Demais Chair for inviting me, for giving the opportunity to present my research work in this department in this uh, honor seminar. So today I am now uh, going to present the big data in health, the perspective of developing countries like Bangladesh. So this is my content. So National Clinical Data Warehouse, the multidimensional research opportunities in health and informatics. Uh, really, it is a massive uh, data warehouse. There are lots of opportunities for research. So I'll talk firstly about the record linkage problem and how we solve the record linkage problems in Bangladesh and develop a repair based data anon anon anonymization technique and uh, needs a uh, lots of data pre-processing and standardization of our data and integration of uh, environmental factors with the data to have to research on infectious disease. And finally, I'll talk something about the research opportunities and possible research collaborations. And second, uh, this I, as I have, uh, the Honorable uh, Chair has mentioned, that there are two areas of my research. One is uh, data warehouse, another is e-learning. So I have developed a virtual internship system that can be used for uh, learning health data analytics. I, have, I already used in, in my uh, department. So these are the content of my uh, lecture today. So this is my lab uh, where uh, I, I lead this lab, E-Systems Research and Development Lab, Department of CSE Buet. This is the address of the lab. So National Clinical Data Warehouse, actually I started the work in 2015 having a PhD student uh, identifying the problems of National Clinical Data Warehouse, like the developing countries. So we have lots of uh, problems to integrate the data in a big data repository. So that is why our first I work on, on this uh, efficient techniques for privacy preserved incremental record linkage of noisy health data. So this is the this work is the basis of my uh, National Clinical Data Warehouse that uh, I'm going to develop. Uh, after that, uh, we, uh, based on this work, we started to work in a collaboration, collaborative research. Uh, then we have the uh, outcome of the research as a privacy preserving National Clinical Data Warehouse. It's a model of privacy preserving National Clinical Data Warehouse architecture analysis, and it has been published in I uh, LCBR Smart Health Journal, and actually this uh, it was presented in the conference Chase conference in Washington. So I'll uh, talk about that. As these are some other publications in uh, Journal of Big Data and Journal of Speech Technology. Mainly these publications are the basis of my National Clinical Data Warehouse. And for admi administrative purpose, because if we want to do research research on such a big thing. So I must have some kind of permission from the uh, government and clearance that in Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, Medical Research Council, BMRC, is that uh, authority to uh, allow the research on the medical data. So I got permission from the Bangladesh Medical Research Council on 21st March 2022 to integrate anonymous clinical data from 220 hospitals and also from the government, the, 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 uh, the legal and, and other things is uh, uh, controlled by the Director General of Health Services. So uh, after that, we got the permission from the Director General of Health Services for this integration and they uh, communicate to the hospital so that they provide us data. Now we are in the process of signing an MOU with the DGHS and we're so, so we can continue to develop this uh, national data warehouse for multiple purpose research. So this is my research title that was uh, done by my PhD student. Here we see that record linkage, how the record linkage arises. Health data from hospitals, diagnostics labs, research centers, Bangladesh are scattered and hundreds and thousands of uh, sources are uh, generating health records. And they are widely distributed, and there are so many noise and so many different things. Same patient in uh, working, uh, going to different hospitals, different data. So this is a huge problem. 
So that records the record linkage. And at the same time, it records the privacy preservation because health record, you cannot uh, do, use the health records without the, uh, the maintaining the privacy preservation. So the, these two issues we, have, we solved in this research and we developed and, uh, the privacy preserve, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, pro uh, and, uh, framework to do this health uh, record linkage purpose then so that we can use data mining or we can any kind of machine learning or all up using this data. So what is record linkage? The process of linking records from different information systems that represent same entity. Here is an example. See Abdul Kader. So once he has gone to an hospital and he has given this uh, information because usually this information is typed by the office office attendants. So they type differently and they has gone to for fever. And another hospital, another time he has gone, this name, his name, same patient name is written differently. And then uh, different address, uh, address maybe partial correct or not in this voice uh, for different uh, diagnosis. So now, uh, now the question is, are they the same patient? Because in Bangladesh, there is no patient ID, uh, national patient ID or say a unique ID for, for the patient records. So this is the research. How can we uh, make sure that the, the, either these uh, three records are for the same patient or not? So this is the problem of record linkage, also known as data ma matching, entity resolution, or merge, et cetera. So application of record linkage is many. So that hospital records, uh, a patient shown her in the age of five, she has some, she has some records and age grows and she's records is going, growing in different locations, different place. So we have to connect his lifelong records from different sources, different centers. So this is one of the application of a uh, record linkage. And another application is that a person, she, she, had, she might have records in different locations, different systems, maybe one is a medical system, one is a banking system, or one is in another social service systems. So we have to link this record. So there are many applications of this record linkage solutions or problem. So challenge of health record linkage in developing countries like Bangladesh. Real health data available for record linkage contains high amount of noise, as already I have, I have shown. So data pre-processing is required for better record linkage, that is, missing data imputation is one issue. There is many attributes in the, in the software, in the system, but most of the time they always full, uh, the fill up the important information so they can make it quickly. So there are many missing data. So we have to, if we want to process this type of data, we need to develop the missing data imputation and how can we re reduce the noise? So this is the challenge, one of the challenges. Another is unique entity, as I have already said, Unique entity keys are not available in the most most cases. So then I said that we have cross identified. There is we can have to use address, date of birth, gender, etc. to make a key for the uh, the, the patient. And thirdly, health record linkage applications use sensitive and protected health data. That is why I have, I have already said that it needs privacy preservation. That is we have to anonymize the data by using hashing techniques. And Use volume of data and frequent updates in database is a big data era. So you see that in Bangladesh, so 12,000 uh, sources of data. And if the 12,000 sources and all data is integrated in one, one place, every, every day there will be millions of records. And, and, and if we have to make the clustering of millions of records, including the previous billions of records, so it is, we must have an incremental approach for the uh, linkage uh, algorithm. That is why you have develop an incre incremental approach uh, algorithm for this uh, to make it feasible. So this is an example of how, how, how we need pre-processing. Here there's different ID in uh, same patient, different system. So this is an, an example that is we have to handle and same patient with different name. So this is another example. And this is missing data. Some uh, the, the data, there's important data, but it is missing. Uh, sometimes some, something is wrong data. This is gender and male is, is maybe new, numeric data. It's maybe binary, true or false, or male and female. Is, so these, these things are, we have to handle. So this is the generalization of the problem of, uh, of, of this uh, record linkage. So you see that there are many healthcare service providers. 
uh, H S P one two is n number uh, providers. A patient may go different hospitals. Now we have to link all the records of the patient, maintaining the privacy preservation using uh, the non identifiable attributes and generating a key so that the all same records come together for a single patient. So this is the generalization of the, the problem of record linkage, the developing efficient techniques for record linkage of noise health data with privacy preservation. So here we have used, that is, this is the base data set we can, uh, uh, we, we have considered, then we have the, select the features that which uh, is for data mining or our applications, all of analysis. So based on this, we have select the features and uh, based on the features, so this is the operational data set. From the operational data sets, we have have the reduced uh, data set, and that reduced data set now we have we have to pre-process the data uh, for missing data imputation. So here we have used that missing data in some data we have injected forcefully so that we can get a, a training and a test data set, and by this we we have generated a data set with missing values. And that this data set we have used with some algorithm for missing data imputation. And then we have got an imputed data set and we have the initial data set. And from this we have compared, we have the performance evaluation. So this we have done for missing data imputation. And we have used phoneting algorithm to reduce the, uh, in the record linkage. So phoneting in, in algorithm for name and ambiguous data. So the, here you see that a name, a person name, Arif is written here, Arif in, written here, and Arif in differently. So, though names are different, they are they seem, uh, seem seems to be the same uh, same person, same patient. So we have used uh, phoneting and encoding techniques by phoneting. We have reduced the the names into the phonetic code, and that phonetic code that represents that this is a one a single person. In these algorithms we have used for phoneting encoding. And that privacy preservation record linkage, linkage of records without disclosing identifying attributes and, 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 and individuals. So these synonyms linkage of blind data or private linkage records. So this the, so we have we have done this in this uh, case uh, RL algorithm. So this is patient data set. Here in the data set, there are three types of data changeable attributes, unambiguous attributes, and ambiguous attributes. The changeable attributes is like weight, mobile number, it may be changed over time. But that date of birth, it will never change. And the name address is ambiguous, written in differently different places. So we have uh, divided the data into these three groups and we have uh, avoided these changeable attributes for our linkage records. And for uh, unambiguous attributes, we have used the generalization technique. And for ambiguous attributes, we have used the phoneting and encoding. And after that, we have uh, done the hashing techniques. And by hashing, we have, uh, after concatenation, we have generated the key for the uh, patient, for linkage of the records, patient, patient records. And so th this is uh, the algorithm called, called KSRL algorithm, KSRL key will come in detail in the, in the later slides. So this is my proposed PPIRL, Privacy Preserving Incremental Record Linkage Framework. So input data set, base data set we have used, data preprocessing as per we have already discussed, filling missing data, removing unwanted values, transforming data or transformation after uh, transformation, we have got the privacy preservation of the data by phoneting encoding and generalization. And then for performance uh, purpose, we have used the blocking technique so that, that the all data should not be compared to the full uh, data. So for incremental, we have used the blocking technique, attributes uh, as blocking key or, or partition key. So then we have uh, performed the clustering of the data. The clustering using agglomerating and hierarchical clustering. And after clustering, we get uh, we have evaluation the, the, the we evaluated the uh, generation of the uh, keys for the uh, uh, linkages 
and measuring leakage quality and privacy evaluation. After evaluation, in this way, so, so first base data set, we have done the clustering for the whole data. And now, once the data is clustered and um, the initially, so now the, uh, the whole data will never be clustered. That will be, we have an increment, incremental algorithm where each increment will come and this process will be done on, for the increment only and the, in, the clustering of the increments will be compared with the existing clustering based on the blocking. So in this way, we have uh, handled the performance issues of uh, the big data. So, so far, I have uh, discussed about our record linkage. So should I uh, expect some discussion on this uh, record linkage or I move for the full, dis uh, full session and then we can discuss, what do you think? Okay, I proceed and then we'll come uh, later in the discussion. So then we started on the developing of the warehouse based on the record linkage. So this, uh, we have uh, done this research of the privacy preserving national clinical data warehouse architecture and analysis. So this is the problems in Bangladesh, in health, health. This is the one of the scenario that is everything is missing. So how can we systematic uh, bring into the systems? So that is very difficult to work. So it also the population is, is 161 million populations, they have very high populations, and they're, they're also this is a high budget for every, every year, the budget is increasing uh, for health. So uh, the, now the, about the health records, I have already mentioned some, the when we, while we are going to develop a health repository, a big data repository for health or health data warehouse, so we have already discussed the inconsistency, no record linkages, so therefore, and no reusable, no interoperability, and facing lack of research data sets. So I discussed only record linkage problems previously, but when we go to in, implement a big data repository in, in, in connecting all the resources of the country, so re really many other problems arises. So these are some of the problems I, have, I can I, I discuss that any, another inadequate disease analysis, it is not there is no scope of disease analysis, no data available in disease analysis currently, and risk computation, forecasting, no data uh, that can we can forecast some things that what this that may happen on decision making and data driven research. These all the things are absent in because of the uh, data repository, and as a result, there is poor healthcare services, severe health crisis. We have found severe health crisis during the pandemic situation. The people have to suffer a lot because of the data, because of the, uh, the, the system. So it creates the critical situation and male distribution of national and regional health coverages. So this is definitely big because as there is no central repository, central monitoring, so there is a distribution of resources, distribution management of resources. There are so many other problems for this. And as a result, uncontrollable communicable and non communicable diseases. Because in Asian countries, this is many times we have the infectious diseases, communicable diseases. When it spread, it becomes like an epidemic. So when the epidemic comes, we have no way, no tool to manage the epidemic in a, in, in a structured and, and, and efficient way. So our solution is anonymized clinical data hub. So here is the problem domain, we can say, in national research laboratory, in total 13 medical research institute in Bangladesh, like BARDEM, ICDDRB, and like this. These are very big research uh, institutes, and regional, provincial, specialized laboratory. There is total of uh, institutes, uh, 2,277, 2, and medical colleges, 112, and other institutes, 16, uh, 1,672 and 605 government uh, hospitals uh, in all in Bangladesh. And also, as per the Bangladesh Private Clinic and Diagnostic Analysis Association, there are 8,000 diagnostic centers of the country uh, have a DGS approval. So altogether, there are more than 12,000 data sources that are generating data, this is huge. So now, they are de de uh, developing laboratory data 
that are dev and developing gen genomic data, molecular data. So now our uh, approach is how can we integrate this data to a central clinical research and a big data platform. And at the same time, is as our uh, developing countries and also and the nature of tropical countries, there are many infectious diseases to handle. In that case, we have to integrate ambient data, that is environmental factors and environmental data. And, and we want to integrate as well behavior and lifestyle data so that we can help in personalized medical care as well. So ultimately the outcome of will be that reinforce the research and analysis based on this uh, data and also policy and decision making for the health services. So challenges we have solved till now, data privacy and security to ensure private safety. We have developed the key based secure record linkage algorithms, HIPAA compliance and ethical clearance from BMRC. And data integration from heterogeneous sources with secure record linkage, we have developed a repair based data integration model to integrate the data from different sources and data standardization and data exchange and interoperability. So we have been working now standardized data dictionary based on Snowbird City, Lawrence, ICDD 11, some other standards we are going to implement. And developing a highly secure and scalable clinical big data repository in a flexible, queryable format. So for this, we have developed this data warehouse, a multidimensional data model for this. So these, these are our work. We have uh, done some work has been done and some was in, under process. So this is our architecture for the National Clinical Data Warehouse. So here are the sources. Source for every source, we have to implement a wrapper. And then the purpose of the wrapper to extract data with the anonymization using our, the, our record link algorithm and some kinds of uh, pre-processing will be here. But mostly here for anonymization, we can uh, implement the wrapper for a source and that through the wrapper we can get an API, through an API you can get the data to our uh, location. So in this way we have designed a number of wrappers for different hospitals and those are running their system. And through the wrapper we can get the anonym, anonymized data in our system and then when we get the anonymized data then we perform the data cleaning, noise reduction here and after data cleaning and run noise reduction based on our algorithms. So we can get the clean data. And after that, uh, this temporary heterogeneous data storage, this data will be stored where transformation, because data, for data mining, knowledge discovery, we need to transform the data to normalize the data so that we can use machine algorithms and data mining algorithms. And at the same time, we need to standardization because without standardization, we, this NC data cannot be interoperability and, and international standard. So the standardization is done here. And then after that, we upload the data using a, a star schema, the data warehouse schema. As per the data warehouse schema, we have designed the data warehouse schema so that it supports all the disease classes as per data available in the source. So as we are taking all the source data in the data warehouse, so definitely it will support all the disease classes. We have considered that ICD-11 disease class here. And from the NCTW, it will, we have developed algorithms to develop different data marts. And these data marts, each data mart for handling one disease, disease class. So one, maybe one data mart for diabetic, one data mart for uh, say any say dengue disease and data mart for COVID. In this way, we have design the data marts, and from each data mart, we can run the all-up systems, all-up uh, techniques to handle the analysis, DSS applications, and all these sorts of things, and then we'll, we can also uh, use data mining here from the NCDW or, or all-up. So this is our architecture for the National Clinic Data Warehouse. So source server, if we consider the source server, we have used the case RL algorithm, using the patient name, first name, uh, last name, and gender, date of birth, address, we are, because this uh, covers all the uh, ambiguous attributes. Uh, and then 
we have generated the patient identifier PIK. Uh, so the, the, for, uh, this is the for patient safety, and this is the PIK national algorithm. So we have the patient name, we have a uh, uh, significant part of the patient, we have the uh, name of the, we have taken, animagus portion, and then we have mass, and this is the value, and then from this we can, we can have the hashing. So at the, at the same gender, date of birth, address we have used to generate this uh, uh, patient key that is for like, record linkage. And we have found that the accuracy of our algorithm for linkage records is about 96.242% when we apply it in our data set. And DND identification is not possible from the patient key so that we, are, uh, we can uh, say that this system is privacy preserving. Nobody can break the privacy of a patient. And we have done the data modeling and analysis that that is operational data analysis. You see that all the database systems running in each and every uh, sources, they are running their operational database, operational system. So all the attributes of the operational system is not suitable for data mining or knowledge discovery. So we have uh, classified the attributes to have the investigated three health informative systems. Uh, after investigating three health informative systems, we have developed the they uh, analyze that uh, entity relationships are almost the same structure we have found and 77% uh, left chest are identical and uh, interchangeable is, um, among these three uh, sources we have found and but the remaining 20% different uh, data grouped into three categories uh, one is healthcare information includes healthcare profile location branch contacts laboratories etc for healthcare information because we need to analyze about based on the healthcare sources. And we need to analyze of the patient details for national analysis, registered outpatient and inpatient information, including name, gender, date of birth, contact, address, resident, et cetera. And, and medical records, that is, we have used laboratory tests, diagnosis notes, inter, uh, interpretations of tests, comments. So, so far, as it is available, we can in integrate to our warehouse. So this is the multidimensional data model, where this is the factual for test results. So here is the patient uh, PI key is the, the, for patient is for patient there was the PI key, there were time key, healthcare key, then lab key, test group key, test key, attribute key, then uh, reference range key. So all these key involves each and every key is included for a particular analysis of the based on that key. So if we consider that. The, if we consider the patient key, so we can develop the analysis on based on the patient age, uh, gen, uh, patient gender, ethnicity, and then the space of the uh, location of the patient, of the Opazala district, division, and demography. All this kind of analysis can be done on, uh, based on the patient key. Uh, similarly, uh, all kind of different tests, so we can use this uh, test item, the test key, we can, for this different tests, we can analyze it. If we want to develop a, a data mart for uh, a particular disease, we can use these attributes, the test group and test items and test attributes. Based on these uh, three dimensions, we can generate the data marts for different diseases, disease classes. So, and at the same time, uh, for time key, in, you see that uh, spreading disease on different places, we have to use the time key. So, which are so time-based analysis we can use for time dimension, and the resource allocation, resource management for resource management we can use the health, healthcare dimension for resource management, and this is the reference range. Reference key is used for for medical research. That here is the reference, and here is the the value, actual value. They can compare the whether that the, the this value is under the reference value or over the reference value. They can. They can define the, the result of the, how do, how do, they can group the, the, the patient into different groups, uh, the disease classes. So here are lots of research uh, opportunities to do on the, both in computer science research and also the health research. And these are some hierarchy for uh, grouping and analysis of, uh, based on different groups. We can perform these, are, they are mainly used for computationally viable and making the things competition easier so you can use this hierarchy so we have some uh, limited experimental results so far because just uh, recently we have got the permission from the government and from the bmrc clearance 
So there is, uh, before we got the clearance, we could not do so much res uh, research and uh, develop on, on this. So we, we did some limited uh, research, uh, yeah, implemented a limit, uh, limited uh, NCWW, uh, uploading limited amount of data. Actually, we uploaded uh, from three hospitals, we uploaded 1.16 million records uh, to, the, uh, to the warehouse. And there, we found that after linkage algorithm, we found that there are 9,445 uh, distinct patients we have found from this 1.16 million records. And these are the number of patients, the participants to the warehouse. And number of tests, we can found that there are 1,135 uh, distinct tests on this, on this data. And the total number of tests, we have found there are 6,256 uh, attributes here. And we have implemented the three uh, data marks. One is diabetes, and is HIV, and dengue data marks. And for these data marks, we have some, some results. Say, uh, for the dengue data mart, so we have found for, from the three hospital data, there are, these are the, this curve shows that the number of patient, uh, patient tested, and this is the number of patient infected. So here is the conclusion is that the, the June to September, June to September months are the most critical time for dengue outbreak in the demography of Bangladesh. So this is, this is found. If we have the real data on the real time data will be uploading. So real time on the month of June, we can say that, oh, this is the, uh, the position of Django now spreading all over the country. And every day we can tell that before, uh, before getting the information for many uh, sources and collecting data from the warehouse, we can say that, oh, this is, this is increasing. So now we take the decision. And which part of the country, if we show that location-based analysis, say that these are the areas that dengue is spreading. So now we take the measure for control and then um, steps, steps to here. Yeah. So for, for inter-year analysis, we can say that every year this, this is a dengue-prone area so that government can take special measures to stop the dengue in that area. So this is the analysis possible for, from the data warehouse. And this is from diabetic data, diabetes data mart. So in the diabetes data mart, we see that, so this is the normal, those are tested, they are normal. This is the number of normal, so this is pre-diabetes, and this is the diabetes. So here, the diabetes developing age is uh, 27 or, uh, or uh, older, and more developed at 40 to, 40 to 70 years. Yes, we see that more diabetes, but this is, this is natural. It, it, uh, it, it's similar to the data, but it has come from the data of the data warehouse uh, based on the analytics. And this is uh, another analysis from so TG and uh, other uh, LDL and HDL analysis. So this is another finding. So in this type of findings, we can say that uh, diabetes patient average TG greater than 150 milligram per liter and uh, age 25 to 40 has peaked TG. So this is the record linkage uh, example, link, link record. So one, so this is the uh, PIK. For this PIK, all her, the gender is female, all her records are linked uh, as per the different hospitals and different systems, different tests. So we have got this result for record linkage. So up to now, so we have uh, uh, the, we have presented the, our uh, performance of the National Clinical Data Warehouse. So now this uh, data warehouse we are using for continual research. So we are we have taken some project to work on. So this is one of the project for standardization. We have uh, we have got the grant from uh, Ministry of ICD Division to work on the, on this generation project, clinical data standardization by developing interoperability framework. As I have already mentioned, the standardization is very essential for uh, the performance of our clinical data warehouse. So we are in the standardization process, we are, uh, we are, uh, upon the, this domain, we are uh, including domain experts and international standards, we are, giving the input from the domain expert and, and standard. And this is the National Clinical Data Standards Interoperability Framework. 
So when this will be developed, so it will be used by different healthcare services, healthcare providers. They must develop their software based on this clinical standard and will develop and publish it. And clinical data platform we will use also as well. And this is uh, that must be an easy to or uh, inter interface and resistant coding system so that so that this can be used easily. So this uh, standardization we are working on. So these are the standards we are going to uh, incorporate in our standardization process. That is data intelligence uh, format OMOP, uh, the and uh, SNOMED City, Loyans, uh, NHS reference. In Bangladesh, most of the health services and medical records they use the NHS, this British standard. So we have to consider that as well. And we are considering ICD 11 and for, uh, to cover of all our disease classes. And another uh, work in progress that we are personalized secure patient, patient record because when anonymized records, so there are, uh, while we are getting, uh, asking permission from the government, from Director General Health, then they ask the question, what the citizen will get from your data warehouse? So then we thought that, okay, how, what service we can provide to the citizens? Then we uh, introduce a project that is blockchain-based patient record linkage system for big data analytics so that the patient can store his own data in his own way, no, no privacy preservation, because he can access data, he can store data, and he can retrieve data in his, uh, and he will be the owner of the data. So this framework, we are just currently just under the test base uh, to answer the question, the how much we can use blockchain for our uh, data privacy and uh, without anonymization, how much we can use the uh, data to give the service to the patients. So without anonymization. So that is why we are doing research on this personal uh, decentralized blockchain infrastructure. So every patient with the uh, consent of the patient, so the every uh, health information service provider, so he can put his data to the uh, blockchain for, for his important data that is he will be the owner of the, of the data. And in this way, the un, uh, that is uh, unambiguous data, that is uh, uh, the data that is uh, not uh, uh, breaking the privacy preserve from his own data can be stored from diff different hospitals that he can link by his, his will. And this data also can come by innovation to the clinical data repositories. So this part we have been working on currently. And another, this is, the, this, this is also work in progress, integration of environmental factor. So we have a project with the uh, Department of Environment. So to integrate the env environmental factor into the warehouse to uh, measure the impact of environmental factor on our infectious disease spreading. So engineering climate data into clinical data warehouse for infectious disease from satellite images, all this, these, these are the, uh, uh, they are, working on this project. They have got the uh, fellowship for, for this work. So the public health and anticipation is that when, where, and how fast and how widely an infectious disease will spread and how great a threat or region of the population to take the measure of this. Not only the clinical data is not sufficient to answer these type of questions. So we have to consider the, the environment factor as well. Then latitudinal, longitudinal, long, longitudinal latitudinal, seasonal, and interannual association between climate and infectious diseases and quantification of the evidence-based uh, favorable environmental factors. So this is we have to consider and forecasting infectious diseases outbreak based on the environmental factors. So there is how you have considered these are these env environmental factors, the temperature, env temperature, rainfall, and humidity. And also, there are wind speed and cloud am uh, amount and sunshine. So these are not available currently in the in the environmental factor. So these temperature, rainfall, and humidity. So we are using this uh, data to in in integrate to our NCTW. So now, if we consider that there are twelve thousand uh, data sources and 
and there are 4, 495 upazila. So administrative division is 495 all over the country, but 12,000 is the individual. So here is in the uh, BMD Bangladesh Meteorological Department weather station, they have only 35 stations that are collecting this weather data. So now if we want to integrate this weather environment factor into the data warehouse, so I need data for 495 uh, locations to integrate as per the location of the Upozala level. And if I want to integrate all the data to 12,000 sources, in that case, I have to make it for 12,000 sources yeah, based on their location analysis. So this I have doing, we are doing as a, a data interpolation method we are using. There is here a sample point, these points, these points, uh, these are known, and this point is unknown. So we are developing the interpolation algorithm so that we can get this data, develop this data by interpolation. So, so data interpolation needs 35 stations to 495 points, and then we ultimately we need to interpolate to 12,000 points. So these we are we are working on it, and that there are also uh, to compare our interpolation method. Their data from uh, satellite image data. There from the image they have also the uh, some data generating for this. So we can compare with this, and then thirdly we can integrate this interpolated data to the uh, data warehouse for our big data analytics. Now the future work and conclusions. So future work, you see that currently we have integrated only the pathological data because pathological data is easy to integrate, to, easy to get it. So we need to integrate the other uh, data, the uh, radiology data, genomic data, molecular, socioeconomic factors, behavioral, all this data. So if I have the full present, we have to extend in this way so that we can uh, include other data as well, inshallah, in the uh, warehouse. And then uh, currently, that is, we have developed a, a data mart for diabetes, dengue, and HIV data marts. So, but we need to create data marts for other ICD-11 disease classes. So this is your, your huge work to uh, develop a data mart. And also the, for diabetes data mart, there, we need to more analysis and algorithms to transform the NCD data into the data marts so that the data mart is, uh, there is 100% accurate or the, the near 100% accuracy in that. So here, it, it regard, we, have, we need to involvement of the physician, that is medical health science research, and also computer science research. Both needs to integrate it here for developing the data marts from the NCTW, defined uh, disease data mart. And also then we can uh, use the uh, different analysis from, from, from the data mart. So disease center knowledge base development for predicting health risks and corresponding wellness plans and clinical reference justification. This is one of another. That there is no clinical reference. We use the reference from the uh, who that is developed for UK or USA. So we use the same reference. Maybe it is not either is true or false. There is some deviation. We cannot. We cannot. We do not know. So we can find this deviation and we can find our own reference. Uh, in Bangladesh, and we can use for OLA for health policy support and generation of research data set. Ultimately, we, we can develop a lot of research data set for both medical research and computer science research. So this is our uh, vision to uh, go at the NCTW for there, there is 160 million people who join to the NCTW so that they can have the personalized benefit from the NCTW and 12,000 health data sources that can be kind of integrated to the NCTW and uh, by the administration director general health services that government other research institutes and here uh, uh, all the research institutes of health research they will be in, uh, connected and the computer science research lots of opportunities for computer science research they can be connected and it will be based on the university center uh, I will be, be controlled yes so this is altogether about the health and 
only a few uh, minutes, just I'll talk about the, my e-learning projects. So I have my research in two directions. One is health and the data wire, big data analytics, and another e-learning. Both I have, I have been doing for a couple of years together. So I have developed a lar uh, number of e-learning systems for, that are using for better learning in the pandemic situation and also not non-pandemic situation as well for uh, in the blended learning environment. Here is the learning uh, health data analytics in virtual internship system. I've developed uh, this available in vinternship.org. Uh, vinternship you can go there and, and see the system and uh, the system here. What we have done that universities, interns, health service providers and researchers, you can join together to learn the different techniques of health services for data analytics, for data uh, systems. This is my system architecture. While the virtual industry environment has been created using the data sets. So here we have used all health data, health data, data warehouse data and health, other health data so that that, that system can be used by the, uh, the, the uh, interns or learners and by the guidance of the industrial supervision, industrial mentorship. So this is the four components, what is admin and industry and mentor and intern. These four components are included in this system so that they can learn together. And because there are problems, the real system, working in the real system, it is not possible for various reasons. Those who are want to learn the real system, they do not have the access to the real system because of the privacy concern. So we are just virtual environment so that everybody can learn and work on like a real system. So this is learn uh, out of uh, health data analytics. So the structure of clinical laboratory environmental sensors, uh, they can learn data preprocessing, noise reduction, missing value imputation, normalization, standardization, they will learn extra transformation loading and multidimensional data modeling and then on all up and aggregation, correlation, data mining, everything based on the health data. So I have included it in this uh, module. And these are the working schedule of the of this module, uh, what I used. Actually, I used in the last uh, round, uh, having say about 20 interns to learn the health data analytics. So their feedback is really impressive. So that one of the industries in Bangladesh they have taken my system to popularize it, to use it in the real system, to teach the interns of CSE graduates to about the data analysis of health data analytics. So these are the uh, methods. One is learning that for technology learning, I have used some synthesis uh, data for technology learning for data analytics. So they set the local environment to the machines, and they work on this synthetic data, and they start, they upload the data to the data warehouse format and they run the all of queries and the visualization and uh, using these tools so they learn all this data on analytics part here using a synthetic data set and then i have uh, used actually the real real updated health data analytics i have given this schema to the to the uh, interns that you populate this we have the raw data you populate this uh, uh, warehouse schema so that you can get the analytics, you can learn the analytics from this. So this way they learn the health data analytics. In the, the summary of the virtual learning of the health data analytics, teaching learning using synthetic data, database technology, programming environment and languages and warehouse concept and technology, they learn using the synthetic data and then they apply their knowledge to real life data with the for data anonymization, instruction, pre-processing, loading, and health data analytics. So now, all over the, I have identified that there, there may be a possible uh, collaboration with OHSC. Uh, there is, uh, we can work together about the standardization and interoperability framework, how can we, our system can be interoperable, so we can uh, work together. Knowledge transfer through training and research, so it can be a, a, a method of collaboration possible technology and data sharing as per the government governing rules. So we are generating research data. Uh, so maybe there is opportunity for uh, data sharing as per the governing rules. We can do uh, it. And faculty exchange program in different ways. Uh, we can have the further collaboration in uh, this, uh, with this uh, National Clinical Data Warehouse and Health Research. 
So this is the outcome of the academy industry research collaboration. Here's my yesterday lab. Ubicom is um, Ubicom lab, lab is uh, Margaret University, and my iSoft is an in industry, and Ubitix is a US based industry, and Institute of uh, Information Communication Technology in Buet, yeah, they also joined with me. And uh, special thanks to Bangladesh Medical Research Council for their eth ethical clearance. So this is my uh, presentation altogether. Thanks a lot for patience hearing of my talk. Thank you very much. Any question? You can find us at ESA Lab, and this is uh, my location. You can see. So, um, Chat from any questions here from anyone? Yes. So I just started talking and I, I was an AP student of course talk when I, I graduated from ninety five, right? So uh, I, I think that you know this is uh, extraordinary, like you know what I have seen here, like you know it's uh, unthinkable, right? You know such a big system. Right, at a national level, I think Bangladesh can be done. And as he talked about more on the logistic side, I know what is requires is, you know, is, is enormous, right, you know, on the scale. So I have a few questions, right, you know, so that I don't <laughs> you know, take all the time. So um, when you, you did all this, when you started all this, right, you know, how you were thinking of scaling this, right, you know, right now, when you got the clearance, right, you know, what is the, database framework, right? Is it like an open source or is it a proprietary a database right, you know, that uh, will be storing all this data? And as the, the data is being accumulated over the, the months, days, right? And how, how this uh, information will be stored or backed up, right? You know, if there's some data loss or something happens, right? So, uh, and- Okay, um, thanks a lot for the question. This is a very important question. So for this, uh, what we are thinking that uh, now we are developing the model and Buet authority, authority has granted us a resource for testing the model, storing the model. We are uh, using the Buet data center for, for this purpose and they have uh, given several terabytes of storage and uh, I think uh, a 30, uh, 64 GB RAM and virtual uh, environment to test the warehouse. And we'll do the research part from all kinds of systems, developing the systems, integrating the systems, testing the wrappers, integrating the wrappers, uh, testing the algorithm for record linkage, and when it will be perfect, and it, it, it actually it is uh, difficult for the university to host the whole thing. So maybe we'll pro pro propose, we are, it is under process, a discussion that we will sign an MOU with the government so that government either government can uh, establish a data center specially for this purpose at BUET and it will be owned by government and BUET so that BUET will do the research part and the uh, government will use this for decision making and other purpose. In this way, we are finally does and we will send the proposal to the government uh, final implementation. As long as final implementation, we will do only the research part. Okay, well, I think we're about out of time. So um, thank you again for coming. And it sounds like this is potentially the beginning of a collaboration uh, between OHSU and BUIT. And we'll, we'll see where that goes. And I, I hope it uh, works out well. So thanks again. Okay. Thanks. 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 I am going to go to my next meeting. Uh, well, yeah, you yeah, thank you. 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 Thank So yes. do you work with the navigators?